Hello everyone, in today's video we will be talking about phonology in detail. In the previous video we talk about the difference between phonetics and phonology. The link of that video is in the description. So let's talk about phonology in detail. Today's topics are what is phonology, types of phonology, key terms, phone, phoneme and allophone, minimal pairs and sets, phonotactics, syllable, structure and types of syllables, co-articulation effects, assimilation and elision and lastly the importance of phonology. What is phonology? It is the study of sound systems of language, it is the study of patterns of the sound system of a given language and the analysis and classifications of its phonemes. It is concerned with the abstract or mental aspects of the sound in language rather than with the actual physical articulation of speech sound that is the concern of phonetics. There are four branches of phonology, diachronic phonology that studies a pattern of sound system through the history of language. Synchronic phonology studies a pattern of sound regardless of the process of historical change. Number three, segmental phonology that analyzes speech into discrete segments such as phonemes. Number four, suprasegmental phonology. It analyzes those features which extend over more than one segment such as intonation, stress, rhythm, pitch and loudness. Key terms, number one is phone, that is the smallest perceptible discrete segment of sound in the stream of speech. Phoneme, that is the smaller unit of speech distinguishing one word or word element from another as the ta in the word sat. Phoneme is written or enclosed within slants. Allophone. When we have a set of phonemes, all of which are versions or variations of one phoneme, we add the prefix allo, that means one of a closely related set and refer to them as allophones of that phoneme. Allophone is a variant of a phoneme. The allophones are very similar to each other and very important thing is that they don't change the meaning of a word and they don't occur in the same phonetic environment. For example, the ta sound in the word tar is normally pronounced with a stronger puff of air than in present in the word ta sound in the word star. So if you put your hand in front of your mouth and when you pronounce tar, you do feel that puff of air coming out. So you feel some physical evidence of aspiration, the puff of air accompanying the ta sound at the beginning of the word tar, but not in star. So the difference is tar and star. This aspirated version is represented more precisely as ta with a smaller edge. That's one phone. Because these variations are all part of one set of phones, they are referred to as allophones of the phoneme ta. Minimal pairs and sets. When two words such as but and cut are identical in form except for a contrast or difference in one phoneme occurring in the same position, these two words are described as minimal pair. The pair also means two. For example, fat, sat, fan, man, sit, and fit. Minimal sets. When a group of words can be differentiated each one from another by changing one phoneme always in the same position of word, then we have minimal set. Bit, beat, bat, boot, and boat. Phonotactics. It's one of the abstract aspects of phonology. It is the area of phonology concerned with the analysis and description of the permitted sound sequences of a language. It defines permissible syllable structure, consonant clusters, and vowel sequence by means of phonotactic constraints. Phonotactic constraints are highly language specific, so every language has its own constraints or limit limitations. For example, the forms such as fursa laga or ra na laga. These uh, consonant clusters, they don't exist or unlikely ever to exist in English language because they have been formed without obeying some constraints on the sequence of origin of an English phoneme. Such constraints are actually phonotactics. Another important concept is syllable. A syllable is one unit of sound in English. Syllables join consonants and vowels to form words, but it is mandatory for each syllable to have a vowel sound. A syllable must contain a vowel and a vowel-like sound including diphthong or diphthong is two vowels combined making one sound. The most common type of syllable in English also has a consonant represented with this C before the vowel represented with this V and it is typically represented as CV. 
Now the structure of a syllable. Syllable is divided into two parts. Onset and rhyme that you can see that are written in red color. Onset has one or more consonants and rhyme. It has two parts, nucleus and coda. And whenever we have this nucleus, that means that is the main thing. So if any vowel does not have a nucleus, that means it is not... Uh, uh, if any syllable does not have a nucleus, that means it is not a syllable. So nucleus is the vowel and coda is one or more consonant. We'll discuss it in detail with another example. But before that, let's talk about two types of syllable. The syllables that have an onset and a nucleus but no coda, they are called as open syllables. Like C, to, so have an onset and a nucleus but, it, but they don't have coda. Closed syllables, they have an onset, nucleus and a coda as well. They are known as closed syllables. For example, up and cup, hat and at. So in up and cup, p is the coda and hat and at t is the coda and since this, these syllables have coda, that's why they are called as closed syllables. The basic structure of a kind of syllable found in English words like green, ccvc, eggs, vcc, SAM, CVC, and so on. Now, see the example. The word is string, and we are going to do its syllabic division by dividing into part of syllable. String, sir, ter, ra, these are different consonants that are coming before the vowel sound. So, that is the onset. E is basically the nucleus, vowel, and n and g, ing, that is coda, two consonants. And when they are combined with ink sound, that is single consonant. So, string is the syllable. Co-articulation effects. When we speak, our talk is fast and spontaneous and it requires the articulators to move from one sound to the next without stop stopping. The process of making one sound almost at the same time as the next sound is called as co-articulation effect. There are two most common co-articulation effects, assimilation and elision. Let's talk about them in detail. Assimilation. When one sound becomes the same or similar to another sound in the word. In other words, when two sound segments occur in sequence and some aspects of one segment is taken or copied by another while speaking. So this is here. We have copying or mixing of two sounds. See the examples. Have to in these words. We don't say we have to go. We say we have to go. Like it's have to. Have to, it becomes first sound, have to. Would you mind, it becomes would you mind. Mixing of sounds and then ja sound is there. Good boy, when mixed, he's a good boy, not good boy. Handbag, change it to handbag and then handbag. Elision is opposite. The process of not pronouncing a sound segment that might be present in the deliberately careful pronunciation of word in isolation. See the examples. I don't know. We say, I don't know. Mashed potatoes. We say, mashed potatoes. The is missing. Next day. We say, next day. I'm coming next day. And next one is the most common one. We don't say black and white. The picture is black and white. We say, the picture is black and white. Black and white. We asked him. And when it is, there is a lesion, we'll say, we ask him. Co-articulation in normal speech and their relation. These two processes of assimilation and elision occur in all regular speech and should not be considered sloppiness or carelessness in speaking. In fact, constantly disregarding a language typical pattern of assimilation and elision would result in exceedingly artificial sounding speech. If we are not going to uh, take care of these two aspects, then our speech is going to be artificial. So this assimilation and elision, they make the sound the speech more natural and more fluent. We study these phonological processes to get an understanding of the regularities and patterns that underpin the actual usage of sound in language. Coming to the conclusion, importance of phonological awareness. It is significant to study phonology in language because it can assist students in learning about language structure and recognizing and analyzing sound patterns. Students can also gain a better understanding of what words and sentences mean by practicing phonology. Phonological awareness is the foundation for learning to read also and it, of course it improves the reading process and pronunciation as well. 
It is also essential to have phonological awareness when learning to read any alphabetic writing system. Additionally, research demonstrates that struggling with phonological awareness and other phonological abilities is a strong indicator of later reading and spelling difficulties. Most children spontaneously develop phonological awareness. However, difficulty with it might be an indication of a reading disability such as dyslexia. Children with dyslexia may require additional assistance in learning to recognize and manipulate word sound. That's all for today. If you have any question, you can write them in the comment section. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thank you.